Peace, y'all. Before we start this episode of Real Notes, I wanted to let you know that my first book ever, Real Notes, Culture Writing on the Margins of Music and Movies, is out right the fuck now. That shit feels so crazy to say. About two-ish years ago, my good homie Austin Williams approached me about writing a primer on the worlds of digital journalism, criticism, and how they interact for his journalism students, and naturally, I jumped at the opportunity. This book is part autobiography, part journalism textbook, and part essay collection spotlighting some of my earlier work, particularly for my old stomping grounds over at djbooth.net. This industry has always been unstable, but with layoffs and general consolidations happening at publications all over, this book feels more pertinent now than it did while I was writing it. And while it may be for students, anyone who's a fan of writing, music, film, and this podcast, of course, will appreciate it. The book is only available digitally through the Kindle app and through the Amazon link below. So go to Amazon, search for Real Notes, Culture Writing on the Margins of Music and Movies, and just add that shit to your collection, man. Um, no, you don't need to have a Kindle in order to read the book. Either download the Kindle app or you can access it through the Amazon one-click link. So many people have been asking me, like, you don't need to own a Kindle. I promise I wouldn't do that to y'all. Just, like, grab the book if you can, if you're able. Good looks if you can. I really appreciate your support and consideration. It means the world. Now let's get back to talking. What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is Houston rapper Gerard, formerly known as Danny Watts. We spoke about Doom Part 2, finding beats on YouTube and Twitch streams, the Look Who's Talking series, Baby's Day Out, Powder, downloading music on LimeWire, coming up on East Coast Hip Hop, quitting his job to work with California rapper producer John Wayne, and the journey from his debut album 2017's Black Boy Meets World to adopting the name Gerard and releasing his next project, Here's What I've Been Doing. Come fuck with us. What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to Real Notes. Um, what, what day is it? It's a Wednesday. It's Wednesday, April 3rd. Um, it's raining like shit outside. My allergies are going crazy, but you know, we're maintaining. I got the I got the dollar store Zyrtec on deck. So we're gonna make it work. Um, my name's Dylan Green, Cinema Sci. Uh got a lot of names, do a lot of shit. Um, outside, inside, all sides, all places, all spaces. Um, and I'm with somebody else who's also all over the place. He just came back in from the blistering heat. Um, I'm very happy he's not outside. It's crazy in Houston right now. Um this is a special one because this is our first time talking in about seven years, and uh, there's been, it's been a lot of change. It's been a lot of a lot of growth. A lot of why are these cats fighting right now? Yo, stop it! Damn, sorry. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a lot of change. It's been a lot of growth. Um, you know, this is uh, this is this is Texas's finest right here. Uh, native of Texas and been to California and back again. Um, y'all may have known him at one time as Danny Watts. Um, but now he goes by Gerard and we got Gerard in the building. He's fucking here. Welcome. Welcome, bro. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yes, sir, man. Appreciate you for having me, man. Like you said, you're a man of many names and I'm a man of many names as well. Formerly known as Danny Watts. Now I go by Gerard. Gerard in the backyard coming hard with, with the bars. You feel me? Uh, appreciate you for having me, man. Definitely been a long time coming. Um, glad to to be sitting down with you today for sure for sure yeah no nah, man i'm really happy you're here and like before i forget to even say it like yeah here's what i've been doing out now it's been out for a little a little under a week at this point by the time y'all hear it it'll be almost two weeks um i know this is i know there's been a lot of blood sweat and tears that has gone into this and just everything else you've done and you know like we're gonna talk about a lot of things because there's a lot of there's a lot of history to dig through here um but you know like we um yeah, the last time you and I spoke was um, for this piece I wrote for DJ Booth about uh, Black masculinity um, around the time that Black Boy Meets World came out. Um, it was you, uh, my homie Kemba, and my homie Stick Figure. And yeah, like it's it's like I've been, I've been t obviously I've been tapped in since then. And um, to see you back and see you feeling good enough to drop a project on people makes me happy because like you're dumb talented. But um, before we get into all of that uh, detailed shit, I got to ask you the first question I ask everybody who comes on here. What was the last movie or TV show you watched that you had a strong opinion about? 
Oh man, bro, that's tough because, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I I, I let go of TV. I've been a, a YouTube <laughs> nigga for the past um ten years, bro. I can't. That's cool too. I me too. Same here, basically. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, like coincidentally, the last movie that I just watched was uh that movie Dune with uh Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet and all that. How'd you like it? It was pretty cool. Um. As always, bro, I bro, I hate the way they do black people in movies, bro. They be doing us <laughs> so dirty, bro. Like I don't understand why, dog. Like there was a um uh, there was a part in the movie where uh Timothy Chalamet's character, he was supposed to um he was he, you know, his whole his his dad got murdered, the whole village got like torn apart and everything. So he went out yeah. there with the freemen, the people that live in the desert. And so they came across him and his mom and they were like, uh, y'all could come into our society. But the black dude was like, nah, fam, like I'm not having yeah. it. Like they some <laughs> outsiders. And so the way that they boosted the black guy up, like Zendaya came and gave Timothy Chalamet a sword. Like, hey, bro, I'm giving you this sword because you definitely finna die. But I'm gonna give you this sword so you can die with honor because because old buddy, he like really with the shits. So I'm like, oh, damn, like it's finna be at least. I know they're not gonna kill Timothy Chalamet because he's the main character, but it's like right. I, at least he gonna like he gonna have to like really earn this victory, bro. As soon as the fight started, like a minute or two in, he was like he was like fucking with the black dude, and it was like he never killed nobody before, and so he was like, "Uh, you do you yield? Do you yield?" And yeah. I'm like. <laughs> Bro, you don't even got like a a bloody nose, nothing like that. So I was like, I just, I can't stand the way they do black people in movies. Like he, they, he could have put up a better fight than that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy you bring that up because I was just talking. To, I was just talking to my homies drive by and one shot once about this last week because drive by saw it and like and like I saw it. Uh, I want to say like two, three ish weeks ago, like. I said last week the movie the movie really like before we get to all of that specifically like generally the movie to me was like the director watched it felt like he watched like the Chronicles of Riddick and Game of Thrones and then like binge Destiny 2 for a couple hours and then like read like the Muslim section of a world religions textbook and was like I want to make a movie it, like that's how it felt to me and I think that extends to uh that extends to <laughs> that extends to a lot of like the the black characters and the brown characters and just like the whole like white savior aspect of it always kind of had me fucked up. And like, I like Timothy. Sh uh, let me take that back. I don't know if I like him, but he's a, he's a decent enough actor. And like, I was happy that Zendaya at least got like more shit to do, but yeah, no, they kind of had us fucked up in this one, bro. <laughs> like, bro. They had us, they had, they had us all sorts of fucked up. Like, yeah, bro. Like, like you said, I, I the the whole white savior complex and and yeah bro that that i just can't stand how they how they do stuff like that bro it i don't know i like i said i don't really be into like movies and stuff like that i just kind of got bored on it and really just been binge watching youtube and stuff on the internet for the past few years so oh, what's been what's been what's had you what's had you stuck for the last couple of years like what's really what's yeah why am i What's stuck with you the last couple of years? Uh, as far as what? Just, just like, just, just like what you've been watching that you keep going back to, or like, is there anything specific that you're watching, or you just like stumbling across shit? Bro, yeah, yeah, I just be stumbling across stuff. Um, um, uh, yeah, it just depends on what the YouTube algorithm uh have me watching. I'm definitely a sports fan, so I watch basketball yeah. a lot. Um, uh, I've been, I've been big into um. Uh, I like to watch Twitch streams. I like the like the AMP. I watch uh Agent and Kai and, and like Duke Dennis and and all those boys. Like I, I check out their stuff from time to time. Um, and I I've been finding a real. I like to show up to like uh Twitch streams where they do like music reviews and music feedback. Um, uh -huh. anything as far as music, bro. That's where I really be at. Like I be trying to find like up and coming producers, up and coming artists. Like I'm always trying to find like yeah. new stuff. So. I be in those type of twist streams like all the time. That's tight. What are some of your favorites? Cause like, cause like there's a like 
stream streaming like streams have always kind of been like a they've been a blind spot for me for the last couple of years i like them but i'm not like i'm not like in them the way that i feel like i should be like there was a period of time like early on in the pandemic where i was like kind of i was kind of uh stalking through twitch heavy but i stopped and then i just kind of never went back so like where do so like where do you go like what's your what's your go to when you're looking for new shit oh uh... Bro, honestly, I just go on Twitch and type in music review or music feedback, and whichever Twitch streamer yeah. got like nine, ten viewers, I go in there. Recently, I've been going to um, this is one Twitch streamer. Her name is uh Big Sexy Dez. Um, real hilarious Twitch streamer, very engaging with the community. Um, definitely has like a a real good on camera personality. Um, there's another guy. Um. Uh, he goes by Ghost House. He got a, a studio out in Denver, Colorado. Um, yeah. But yeah, really, bro. Like, like I said, I just go on, on Twitch and just type in music feedback or music review, and then just scroll through the list and just start stream hopping for real, for real. <laughs> so what was so, so so what was the last great one, or or maybe not great one, but like what was the last one that you hopped into and you felt like you had an experience that really like stuck with you? And uh, yeah. Definitely the uh the big sexy days when I I've been going to her Twitch stream for like the uh for like the past month and normally like my shelf life with with Twitch streams is probably if I'm not truly like entertained by what's going on I probably stay in there for like a week or two weeks before I'm like ah, I'm over it now but yeah. with her Twitch stream like I said like on camera personality is really great she interacts with the with the chat real well and. The people that show up in her community to like play music and stuff like that, like they be fired. So I always be just in there. And then also to uh house shoes. House shoes. Um Ah, uh, yeah. Shout out yeah, to House Shoes. Yeah, I like pulling up to his because he he be playing some fire music that be putting me on. So if I ever want to like look for a classic instrumental, like, yeah, I'm finna freestyle over this. I can always go to his stream and get some inspiration for sure. That's tight. Yeah, no, nah, like, you know, like that's one thing I've always loved and appreciated about streaming, just like the community aspect of it and like pe people, people being able to pull up and like play music because you can't always do that in person. Like not every area is going to have that type of thing. Um, I mean, like I'm a, I'm like I'm a definitely I'm a definitely tap in with Big Sexy Des. What type of what type of what type of music does she usually have people playing? Like, is, is, is it like a variety of shit or like does she have like tastes, a specific taste? No, nah, it's it's a variety of uh, stuff like, you know, um, I would say a lot of them send in um, just different variations of hip hop. Um, yeah. But she does have people that send in like different genres, rock or alternative or uh, uh, EDM type stuff. Um, yeah. She's real accepting to like all different different types. And I think that the feedback that she gives um, like I, 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 I use her to uh to test out um different songs that i make because you i mean you know me i come from like a very uh like my at least my musical background is very like lyrical storytelling type hip-hop but these right. days like i'm trying to incorporate having more fun so i literally like on oh god bro i literally made a bad bitch song like I literally <laughs> hey come on now I'm, I'm gonna send i'm gonna send you a link to it so you can listen Please. to it now but i literally made a song like uh as if I was a girl, like literally everything, like always on his mind. Yeah, I'm always on his Timbal. He want to sip like Arizona. Tell me like so uh, I could send her songs like that and like get that genuine feedback. And she'd be like, no, Gerard, like I like this new song that you sent me, but send me that bad bitch song again. So, uh -huh. yeah, she real cool like that. Talk that shit. That's amazing. I love that. And like, you know, like that's like just just getting fast and loose with shit is like what makes music fun you know like i got um you know like i got lucky and or, or or not even just lucky enough like um i got um i got a bunch of homies out in jersey they're a part of a group called the beat lampers um they've been um they've been making music since we were all in like high school type shit and they played this like apartment show in brooklyn uh shout out to the beat lampers shout out to mark and d dan and grits and everybody by the way if they're listening um and like they, and like they had hella people just like playing beat sets like it was like a type of party where like it's like 75 people cramped into like 20 feet worth of space right there's like three small ass rooms there's somebody on a projector playing like mario party on switch 
and then somebody in the other room just playing beats. I had never heard of like two, or, I, I had never heard of any of them DJs. And I'm just sitting here and listening to like these chops and these loops. And like, it really just brought me back to like some communal, like pulling up to like some random ass venue in New York or Jersey or like me in college and people are just playing music and I'm just like getting put on. And I'm just like, why? And like, there's no better feeling to me than that. Just like stumbling across some shit that you've never heard before that just like, that just like whops you in the forehead. And it's like, whoa, like, <laughs> you know? And exactly, like, exactly, you, you really, you really can't, you can't put a price on stuff like that. And I do really appreciate, you know, like the handful of like Twitch streams and stuff like that I've been involved or not involved in, but like pulled up to, like, it's always nice. Like that's, I always leave with that feeling. So it's nice to not only see you kind of push yourself in a different direction to like, you know, just like experiment with that, but just to in, just like it, it just it just all feeds into the fun aspect and like fun is fun and we all like we need more fun i keep I've been, i feel like i've been saying this for like six months we need more fun like rap music needs more fun and i'm happy that you're i'm happy you're on that type of time yes sir man bro i feel like uh in that regard like we cut from the same cloth like even before this uh the surge of the internet like back in the day i was always yeah, like in the local scene pulling up to different parties learning about di different djs different artists that exist in the city and like i've always been more of like the mainstream gonna be the mainstream but like these are these local acts are literally my favorite and exactly. so ever since the pandemic um and you know like the the irl music scene has really kind of been reshaping and reforming um i've been just finding these spaces online digitally because that's something that i genuinely crave like i crave to like know the next up-and-coming producer the next up-and-coming artist um mm -hmm. because to me when i listen to that music when i come across something great like the quality there's is no different to me like the impact that it has on me is no different than like a person that releases a strong on, on mainstream so right I, I just love existing in those spaces yeah no nah, it's like it's more authentic and there's more room to just like build and experiment like that's why i'm so grateful to like you know because like in like new york and jersey there's like so many like like i run with so many talented people like whether they be like rappers producers writers creatives whoever like i'm so lucky and so grateful to have spaces like that and spaces like my man miles runs his thing crate sessions um shout out to them shout out to still moving fucking like amani and all of them do their shit everything at loudmouth shout out to them like there's like 80 billion different things like shout out to gang ptp and all of them putting on for like there, there's so many people I could name Nobels, fuck it. Like, but yeah, like, yeah, like there's like, you're right. We're at this point now where we're at this point now where there's like, there's, it's just like really, it's just really easy whether you're like doing it in person or doing it online to just like find a space for you. Everything's niche now. Like there's no, like, like not to say monoculture is dead. It's just different than it was, but like everything's a niche. You know, even the mainstream is a niche now. Like that's kind of where we're. It's it's like, you know, like you could have like six hundred people over here talking about Dochi. You could have six hundred people over here talking about Drake. You could have six hundred people over here talking about Gerard shit or John Wayne shit or whoever. You know, like and and you're like we'll get to John later. But like that's just just like I don't know. That just makes me happy, and I can tell just based off of like what you did with this latest project that you've been and you're like I've even seen you doing it on Twitter and stuff like you're always like looking for new shit and like staying hungry is not an easy thing to do it's it, it, it can be easy to like lose that motivation so like before we dive into these next questions like what what keeps you coming back because not everything's not everything's popping at all times but like what keeps you coming back man just the love of it uh <laughs> just making music is my identity man like uh, i feel like it's truly my purpose um it, it music is my therapy uh like i still go see a therapist talk to a therapist but there's nothing like the creation of music um um 
my brain is just filled with words and I got to find a way to get them out. And, you know, fortunately, I was blessed enough with the with the skill to be able to make music. So that's always first and foremost for me is just that hunger to always want to create. Um, and honestly, bro, like I feel like I feel like, you know, everybody feels this way, but I feel like I make the best music. Like I could literally listen to my music. I could literally cut off everybody else for the rest of my life and only listen to myself. And I got everything that I need from personal introspective songs to fun yeah. songs to like love songs, talking about girls. Like I got singing stuff now. I literally got everything that I could possibly <laughs> want in my catalog. And just like that, that consistent growth, because these days I'm making music that I never thought that I would be making. Like, back when you first came across me like if i send if you if i showed you my whole catalog you'd be like whoa bro like it's <laughs> crazy like you don't even sound like the same dude so it's just that the hunger for growth and the hunger to like consistently create is just what keeps me around yeah man if 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 you don't love you who will you know like you should like that's 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 really just like the brass tacks of it type shit um but before we get into the music specifically um i'm just curious since this is since this since this is the movie and music spot what's the first movie experience you can remember having it could be at the theater it could be at your cousin house like the it doesn't have to be the very first thing but like the first thing that comes to mind for you i don't want you to have to like it like because everybody always asks like it doesn't have to be the very first thing but like first thing that comes to mind Bro, I binge watched the fuck out of Look Who's Talking with John Travolta and, wow. uh, and, and Bruce Willis doing the voice of the kids. Bro, the baby, I, yeah. yeah, I watched that movie so much as a kid, bro. Like, I already know. Like, I don't even got to think about it. Like, I watched that movie so much, bro. That movie is literally a staple of my childhood. Wow. So, so what was it about that that made it become a staple of your childhood? Do you remember the first time you saw it? Like, why because like that's such a see i've seen the movie maybe like two or three times in my life but i remember the poster because the poster for the movie is like the baby poking its head over like the title card of the movie so like you can't see the baby's mouth but it's like the whole face up to like the nose or some shit and that image is so like I don't know why, but it's just, it's just, it never leaves my brain. It's just, whenever I think of Bruce Willis, that's usually the first thing that pops into my head. That's just me. Tell me, tell me what, tell me why look who's talking is so important to you. Oh, uh, honestly, bro. It's just, it's just a, a reminder of um that time in my life. Like the, the, um the town home that me and my mom were staying in, it was just me and her. And I'll never forget we had back when you had the uh you had the big screen TVs that had the big back, you know, yeah. with no flat screen <laughs> stuff no more. We had that big back. Yeah. Um, and we had this, we had this blue carpet uh in our in our apartment. And I just that's where I would always watch my TV shows. Like I was watching Barney and all my PBS shows, and, and like look who's talking was that was just the first movie where. I just knew it like as a kid, like I knew all the lines. I was laughing um, when they would do like the dancing scenes in the apartment and stuff like I would do the dances with them and everything. So it just that movie just reminds me of like a really cool time in my life where I was just soaking up a lot of just really just the innocence of a kid, um, just not worried about every no cares in the world. Me and my mom right. would watch that movie together and it's just like good family time, man. So definitely that movie that's precious i love that like you see now that you mentioned you got me thinking about uh you ever see this movie called baby's day out before i heard of it i feel like i have seen it but it's been so long so so for you and for anybody else who might be listening baby's day out is it must have been in like the late 90s i think it might have been like 96 or some shit and like so like it's a movie about like this little kid like this baby, I think he's like, I think his family's rich or some shit. And like these mob and like these mob dudes are trying to kidnap the baby for whatever reason. All that matters is that like they spend the entire movie chasing this baby around the city. 
like I I I, I, I think it's New I, I think it's New York City. Like a literal child just like crawling around like buildings and like on like scaffolding. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming back to me now. Yes, sir. And like the one thing that always gets me is that like they use a uh, they use the George Gershwin song Rhapsody in Blue, which is one of my favorite songs in the whole world. I love that song because of another movie that maybe I'll get into in a second. But like every time there's like a big set piece, they just like play parts of Rhapsody in Blue. And that and like it's just it's just these like two like middle aged ass men trying to like catch a baby and they can't catch the baby. It's like some like <laughs> slapstick Tom and Jerry shit, you know, like I'm like. It wasn't one that I'd seen a ton of times, but like it left, you know, like all, all those like there was like a lot of like baby like movies about babies that were like either just like the protagonist or like it would be like a Bruce Willis situation where it's like a baby voiced by an adult or some shit like that. Like like like, like remember baby geniuses? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, baby the geniuses, 90s, was, yo, babies was, was that was the that was like the the thing in the nineties, bro. It's like, hey, we finna oh, baby movies is popping. We finna explore everything we possibly can with babies. Every fucking baby movie, like it, it was, it was, it was like, it was like coming of age hood movies and baby movies. Like that's yep. all the nineties was about. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> bro, good times, man. Yeah, nah, for real. And um, before. So you ever see the second one? Because they made a second Look Who's Talking called Look Who's Talking 2, where they add like where they add like a girl baby. I don't remember who the voice was, but like yeah. I, I never I never saw Look Who's Talking 2, but I saw it and I was like, of course they they went like like the Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man with it. But yeah, yeah, I, I just once again, like the poster was just like it was just like such a weird image of like these two babies like poking their heads over a thing, like some sort of like peering into the uh, i don't know my brain goes weird places but like those posters were so they're just in my brain you know they just never left <laughs> not nah, for sure man uh i gotta look up the posters i i mean i i was so young i can't remember i just remember the movies i definitely watched them both i watched look who's talking and i watched look who's talking too when they were toddlers and then they were taking over the uh they were in daycare and they was like taking over daycare and stuff so yeah i watched that one too <laughs> man just like weird strange wonderful times um as you get older though and you start to have more life experiences was there um was there a movie that kind of stopped you in your tracks uh, or, or or no let me, let me re-ask that again is do you remember the do you remember when you got older uh if there was a movie that kind of stopped you in your tracks in like an emotional spiritual or artistic like like a capital m movie something that was more than just like 90 minutes of entertainment like something that really uh spoke to you in a profound ish way oh man i'm trying to think um um uh... I'm I'm just because I don't want to take too too much time thinking about it. But the first movie that honestly came to my mind, and it was it was this movie called Powder. What's that? I don't think I know what that is. It, it's another. Uh, no, nah, I don't think I don't think John Tra Travolta was in that movie. That I'm thinking of Phenomenon. Um, but Powder was this movie where it was about this this. Um, kind of like extraterrestrial-esque guy. I think he was like a normal human being, but he has some sort of like special power. And he was like, he was he was literally like powder white, like super pale white. And he ain't had like no body hair. He was definitely different from everybody else. Um, and so, you know, he was from like a small rural country. And because he looked different and he had these special abilities, he was treated different. But there was only one person, like one girl that really was rocking with him like that. And the movie was just kind of detailing. Like it was kind of like a coming of age, like him accepting who he was, accepting that he was different. Um, but, you know, he definitely had to overcome like the the scrutiny of the town that he lived in. People were picking on him, bullying him, fighting him, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But that was definitely a movie that that impacted me because um, I moved around a lot growing up, um, and and 
even though it was around my city, like I went to like 10 different schools growing up, like 10, 11 different schools. Um, the first school that I actually stayed the whole time through, like from beginning to end was high school. So up until that point, like elementary school, middle school, I moved and I always felt different. Like, even though it was in the city, it was like real drastic moves. Like one moment I'm in the, I'm in the hood, like I'm surrounded by nothing but black people. And it's maybe like five white people in the school. The next thing you know, we come into some money. So we move into the rich part of rich part of town. So now it's literally like all white people and it's only like five to 10 black people in the school. Right. And yeah. then, and then, so now I'm, uh, my, my lingo changes. I'm saying things like, dude, I'm so stoked. Like, bro, this is radical, bro. Like, and, and tubular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You feel me? Like I was wearing like Osiris's and like DC's like since back in the day, like I was, I would literally like paint my fingernails black. It was like, I had, I had best friends that were white and they wanted to dress like me, like, because yeah. my mom would buy me Jordans and stuff before they were like super expensive um so i would have like jays and stuff and they'd be like bro i want to wear your shoes i'd be like bro i want to wear your shoes and so i would literally have these identity changes where um i would literally like paint my fingernails black and wear like punk rock stuff and then i would go to my best friend's crib and like take everything off and put on my black pass and stuff and go back home because my mom was not rocking with none of that stuff and so i would have a moment like that but then we would move and go to the hood again and so now I'm surrounded by all these black people and I'm like, dude, I'm so stoked to be here. They'd be like, bro, <laughs> what's up with this dude? Like, you know, having to fight and stuff like that because dudes think you like weird and picking on you and stuff. They So uh, I say all that to say that because that was my life experience, I, that movie Powder really resonated with me as far as like somebody feeling like an outsider. Um, I definitely feel like I had a special power because I always been tapped into my... um my emotions like i've been writing poetry and stuff since i was a little kid like since i was eight nine i've been writing poems and writing journals and understanding thinking reading a lot um so that movie to make a long story short that movie really stood out to me wow um i'm not gonna lie i've never heard of this movie before like ever in my life i'm looking at it now uh i'm i'm this i mean like i mean like this sounds really cool and you know that's a uh that's just i mean like you can't really you can't I, I i don't i don't know what my brain just went you can't really you can't really you can't really put a price on those on those experiences and just like i mean like i get it i moved around a bunch too but i wasn't um like i was lucky enough that i just kind of moved around within like the same area and i was able to like go to school in the um in the same places but like just kind of being able to just like drift and you know like be around all different kinds of people but also still feel a little different and weird i get it i, I you're 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 preaching to the choir bro i completely yes, understand man. like <laughs> yeah yes, nah. sir, um and <laughs> yeah i'm looking i'm looking at this i'm looking at this movie right now and apparently Actually, no, nah, I'll tell you that off camera. I'm not going to get into that because apparently this director was on some, apparently this writer and director was on some bullshit. We'll get into that later. But, um, <laughs> oh, but, man. um, you finna ruin the movie for me. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't see, see, I don't want to do that. So we're not going to, nah, it's that. all good, bro. Hey, bro, I'm pretty sure every damn near every movie we didn't watch, like if we really pick it apart, bro, yeah. we already know Hollywood just been on some fuck shit, bro. So yeah forever but um but anyway let's do the same thing with music for you like when did music become capital m music for you like something that went from like like went, from, went like when it went from being like just a passive thing in the background that you were listening to to like it connecting with you and being like this is music like it's more than just like background noise type shit um true i would say it was probably around when I when I got into high school, uh, like 14, 15, 16 years old. Um, that was like when uh like LimeWire was coming up. Um, you had Napster back in the day, you had LimeWire where you could like illegally download everything and yeah, I, done, yeah, yeah. 
out of nowhere, bro, I just became like the 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 school music dude, like amongst my my family and friends. I became like the you know burning CDs was like a thing, burning mix CDs, and so um, that was when music really started like taking over my life, where I would spend literally hours hours like downloading music, um, trying to find stuff back when LimeWire, when you would think you were downloading the song and then like. You would think you were downloading a Soldier Boy song, and it turns out it's like the screamo version of the Soldier Boy. Yeah. Like, uh, so I, I would definitely say around that time, like when Limewire was popping off, that's when I really started like consuming music, and it was the dawn of the internet. So like blogs started becoming a thing, um, and I was constantly on blogs, like looking for new artists, looking for looking for. Um, underground acts uh, i had already gone through like my mainstream phase of watching bt 106 and park and trl every single mm-hmm. day just to watch the same videos be number one and number two like knowing it was either on trl knowing it was going to be either in sync or backstreet boys or britney spears on any given day that you go to bt 106 and park and you know it's either going to be bow wow or it's going to be chris brown uh yeah. You might get a sleeper in there. You might get like a, yeah. you know, Mario popped in. So it was definitely yeah. around that time that like music really took over my life. Maybe Jeezy, if you were lucky. Like I remember yep. Soul Survivor was going crazy when that video came out. But um, but yeah, not. Nah, did you ever um um you ever fry a computer using LineWire? Thankfully, no. Good. Yeah, nah. You 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 got you got lucky. You got lucky. I def I definitely fucked up the family computer using LimeWire one time it, it was it was never the same after I did it that one time and that's when I moved to Pi- that's when I moved to Pirate Bay and never looked back you know <laughs> no nah, I'm you know I, I, hey man I'm just thankful I never had any computer issues like that because I was literally just clicking download on every single thing that's <laughs> that allowed it so I'm thankfully no nah good shit um what was so like what was the stuff that was really connecting with you at that time like you mentioned that you were just like on i mean i'm like you mentioned like it was the blog era and you were just looking for stuff like what was the stuff that was really speaking to you around that time um i was definitely on uh i used to go to like two dope boys now right and illroots.com like all the time um so i was shoot man uh at one point in time like my favorite rapper was Joel santana like i was definitely heavy into like the dipset stuff like can't nobody tell me yeah. anything about Joel santana like he had one of the craziest runs in hip-hop history yo my fault sorry to interrupt but i just wanted to shout out the all new real notes patreon page real quick if you're looking for ways to connect and directly support the podcast the real notes patreon is the best way to do so For as little as $5 a month, you can gain early day before access to every forthcoming episode of Real Notes, as well as an invite to the Real Notes Discord server, where you can talk to others about the latest and greatest in movies and music, come through for some listening sessions, and talk about whatever else is on your mind. I know I'm going to be talking a bunch. If you feel like coming up off a little bit more, you can get cool exclusive content, like audio from Real Notes Live and Real Talk interviews. Those will be exclusive to patrons and ticket holders moving forward. Access to retro versions. And definitely still one of my favorite rappers of all time. I was definitely, I had like a East Coast, East Coast run where I was listening to nothing but Jay-Z, Terror Squad, Dipset. Um, I was listening to um uh Papoose, like I had alphabetical slaughter memorized from front to back. Um that's um, different. Uh, I listened, it was another rapper from up from New York, uh Mickey Fax. He was definitely like like Mickey Fax. Mickey Fax was one of the rappers where when I first came across his music, like I literally started rapping like him. Like that's how much I listened to his music. And um um so I had I had a moment with that and then then I switched over to West Coast. So I was getting into like Blue, Kendrick Lamar. There was this another artist named Hope Wright. 
um you and i um you and i wow that's a throwback yeah, yeah <laughs> yo and thursday like i was definitely into those guys and then you get into like the um the eclectic side of things then i got into like fly low john wayne zero um koreatown oddity like all those type of cats just really like binging those guys um and yeah like the the blog area like bro you put random uh random rappers from like all over like you know kansas city isn't really known as like a, a music city historically but like one of my favorite artists from all from came from that city you go by uh xv uh and he was I like know the, xv yeah yeah he was like the the comic book rapper like he had to like yo square in the circle squareians and stuff like that and yeah yeah he, yeah i appreciate that time because those artists were the ones who were like taking hip-hop and flipping it on his head like he was rapping over janelle monet instrumentals they were rapping mickey fax was rapping over like telepop music instrumentals and daft punk instrumentals and stuff like that right and, and that's a huge part of like my dna today like i have an email handle where it says like this beat better be weird at gmail.com you feel me like <laughs> so man it's really just like all over to be honest yeah, I feel it. And you're like stuff like that. And um, uh, I remember there was a period of time when Lupe Fiasco was rapping over Gorillaz beats on that um on that rhyme and ape mixtape. Yeah, and now like that rhyme and ape shit was my everything. Bro. It was like it it was it was like that. And um, uh, he like uh, he rapped over this crazy sample of like Will Smith from the Muhammad Ali movie, like playing playing the djembe and shouting the champions. That was that yeah, was my shit, bro. bro. That crazy. was crazy. That that and um Joel Santana's whistle song. The whistle song was one of my favorite songs in middle school. Like that shit, that shit, that shit really had me going crazy. Um Bro. Wow. What what a what a journey. <laughs> what a journey. Um before we get into like when you really started to like get into making music for real, um, was there ever a period of time in your life when you noticed that like music and film are two things that can complement each other? Like whether it's in like whether it's like how a music video makes a song different for you or like a needle drop in a movie, it doesn't have to be either of those two things, but like, was there a moment when that synthesis kind of became apparent to you? Um, honestly, no, bro. Um, uh, I definitely, I'm definitely a, a, a music video guy. Like I said, I would sit in front of the TV all day and watch music videos. And then when the internet came, like, um, I was definitely on YouTube all the time watching music videos. Um, but I don't think there was a moment where I really felt like, bro, the music video is making the music cooler or the music is making this music video cooler. It was always just like an all in one package. That's fair, you know, like because at the end of the day, it really is. It's just like you don't always got to think about the individual pieces, but like how it just plays into the whole experience. I just, I, I I don't know. I just love these two things. And it just makes me, uh, it just always makes me happy to like pick them apart and see them, see them as a whole, you know? So I, I get so it. Definitely. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. They do, uh, they do lend into each other. Like, um, like the, the music makes the, makes movies better. Um, but then also at the same time, like, you know, I, I am aware that like when I watch a movie and I hear a song and I like Shazam it or whatever, um, I'll go find a song and then I'll listen to the song and be like, bro, it just don't feel the same because you were introduced to it on the movie and like the scene yeah. that you watch it with like really hit. So like I definitely have moments where I do feel that way, um, where like I'll look at the soundtrack of a movie and go search it up. Like for me, uh, drive with ryan gosling mm, yeah bro there we Good go movie. yeah and the soundtrack to that is so crazy um but i could i couldn't really get into the soundtrack without watching the movie it was it's just, one of those yeah bro so yeah. I, I i agree with you man yeah no i get that because um i think the the guy clint mansell did the soundtrack the only reason i know that is because he did a he did a he, he scored another movie i saw 
for the first time two weeks ago called Love Lies Bleeding, which is great. And you should go see it if you get a chance. But um, yeah, no, nah, like just like that, like 80s, that, that like 80s inflected, like synth pop type shit. I, I, I love stuff like that. And like the, the, and like one of the scenes that always gets me from Drive is like at the end when he's um when he's driving away after uh, after everything happens and they play real human being as he's like driving off into the sunset. I got to watch Drive again, man. It's been so long. I like that was that 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 was a movie that really had me stuck when it first came out. I think I got the DVD somewhere in my crib. I got to go dig it up, but like that's what a what a like 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 when you talk about like iconic film scores and soundtracks, like that's one of them for this era, I think. Like I know a lot of them songs were uh like there were there was like two or three of those songs that were like that weren't made for the movie, but the score is just nuts i love i love 80s synth pop stuff so yeah nah Good facts shit. me too, me too bro and um you, you you made me think about another one but uh hans zimmer when he did the book of eli uh-huh. uh that that i literally looked up that um that soundtrack because i wanted to rap over the beats and over the scores from that movie like i was like bro wow. i'm gonna bar over these so yeah that was another <laughs> one that stood out for me on some on some, like 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 that was about to be your uh, eternal sunshine to Jay Electronica's Act One type shit. You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so you know, like all of this happens. Uh, you moved around a ton. Um, we've talked pretty extensively about uh, um, um, like everything that you were going through in your life at that time. But when, um, when did music? when did music become more than just a hobby or, or i mean like once again like i know the answer to this but when did music start to become more than just a hobby for you because like eventually you're making shit um you're listening to things and just kind of taking it all in and then you go out of your way to reach out to uh john wayne on soundcloud so like talk to me about when you decided that music was going to become the thing that you were going to like quit the job and pursue um that was around uh 2017 um so I, I had been making music probably around like 10 years at that point um you know just uploading stuff on soundcloud and then out of out of nowhere john john followed me and i decided to like message him and see what can what we could do if we could work um that was back in 2015 and then mm -hmm. he presented me with the opportunity to uh to go on tour with him in 2017 but at that point like we had conversations about making the album but it took me two years to like make that record um with him black boy meets world uh right. and so once he presented me with the opportunity and i was able to come through on my part and you know do the whole album in six days and stuff like that and he was like yo we can go on tour i literally went to my job and was like hey i'm out of here like <laughs> I got me messed up. Like I ain't coming back either. There's no temporary hiatus. Like I'm done. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's 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 been that way ever since. Uh, I definitely have had some jobs uh since then, but the goal was always to like figure out a way to like do music full time. And I still ain't quite figured it out yet. But we still grinding to this day, man. Because I know yeah. this is what I want to do in my life. Yeah, you're making it work. This is your dream, you know, and like I was going to ask if it was scary to take that leap of faith, but it doesn't really seem like it was all that scary for you. It just kind of clicked and you knew and then you were just on a plane to Cali, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, so I had I had two different leaps of faith. Uh, the first one was when when I did the tour uh, with John and I just quit yeah. my job and everything. And then after the tour was over, I definitely, I came back to Houston, had to uh, figure things out as an independent artist. You know, you, you, you just come off a tour. This is your first time, like seeing the, seeing the country performing for like sold out crowds and people chanting encore for you and stuff like that. So yeah. you feel like, you know, I come off tour. I'm like, yo, I got motion. Like, hey, can't nobody tell me nothing, bro. I'm finna be one of the greats. Like I'm on my way. And and then everything stops. It's like you start sending out, you know, reaching out to people to try to get shows done. It's like, bro, we don't even know who you are, bro. Like, man. So, uh, so I spent after the tour from like 2017 to 2019. Um, I, 
you know, job top a little bit and just trying to figure things out as an independent artist, really not having like a solid team around me, just trying to figure everything out on my own. Um, and then 2019 came around like right before the pandemic. Um, I had a living situation uh, where I just I needed somewhere to stay. I didn't have anywhere to go. And I had a random conversation with my friend who was in California. He moved there from Houston as well. And he was like, bro, I got a couch. And I was like, OK, here we go again. Hey, hey, uh, <laughs> went to my job, was like, hey, I'm finna put my two weeks notice in and and just hauled ass, bro, packed everything in my car and, and booked it. And the only scarier part about it was the drive there. Like just just the this time it felt truly different than when I went on tour with with John. Like I truly felt like. It was like, you know, if, if you had like a tether that's holding you to your to your roots to back home and you stretching that tether out as far as you can, like yeah. I truly felt like that spiritual tether was like breaking apart. And it took so much out of me to be like to not turn around and just keep on going. Um, but once I got to Cali, I was like, right, it's up. <laughs> and like, were you still were you still making music around this time? Like, like, because I know. Because, like, I know you have a YouTube channel and you upload it there, like, periodically. Um, like, we can get into the we can get into the transitional period between Danny Watts and Gerard in a bit. But, like, what, um, you know, it's like when you when um, when you link up with your next phase, like, are you still making music at this time? Like, what else? What else is going on with you? Um, definitely still making music. Um, it's not. Um. It's really just music, like, you know, just tinkering with things, not to really release anything, put anything out. Um, it, it, the the experience with John was definitely um, a huge blessing. It was a growth process for me as an artist, but it didn't it didn't like fulfill my needs as a as an artist. As far as a creative perspective, I still felt like there was more for me to do. Right. Um so once once I got to L.A. in 2019, you know, the pandemic happened. A lot of real life situations happened. Like I lost my, my I lost my pops in the middle of the pandemic. So a lot of that was keeping me from making music on a consistent basis. Um, right. But I was still just creating just to like figure things out, change my writing style, change my delivery style, change uh, things that I talked about, get more deep, more introspective and, and just figure out figure out different ways to color the canvas with my voice. Um, I was blessed to be able to have like some friends from Houston out there who were doing some really cool things behind the scenes. And, you know, they had an ecosystem of studios and spots they can go to in LA. So I was able to like hop into those and literally just be a fly on the wall and like learn. And, you know, these are people that, you know, I remember them from back in the day, like we were rapping together. And now, you know, they making music where they not rapping at all. Like they on some like, <laughs> like super neo soul R and B, like gospel crazy. Like it, it's just really, they really took what they were doing with their music and and just grew it to like a 2.0 version. And so that definitely inspired me to be like, all right, bet I'm not just a rapper, like. Once I started tinkering with stuff on my laptop and seeing like, bro, I didn't even know my voice could do this. Man, see that that started like really blowing my mind. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so like you know to kind of dig further into that, like compared to com compared to what you and John did with Black Boy Meets World, um, how do you feel you changed as an artist? Like, how else do you feel you changed as an artist? working with everybody else like 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 what like, like what did you bring to that situation and how did you leave different um the the biggest thing that that john taught me was the the art of nuance and music as far as yeah. like uh under really understanding the words that you're saying Look, one of the biggest lessons he taught me i'll never forget we were on tour and we were doing a show and i have this song called uprooted where i'm talking about my relationship with my daughter and how it that's one of my favorite songs on that album sorry to cut you off now nah, you're that good song. bro i appreciate it um 
but yeah, you know, talking about my relationship with my daughter and how it parallels my relationship with my father. And it's kind of like, you know, we talk about generational trauma and not being able to escape the mistakes of your, the people that come with your ancestors. Um, and so I never forget, I was on a show and literally bro, like, I'm like in people's face, like rapping aggressively. Like it's this super soft, sensitive song. And I'm like, uprooted, uprooted. Uh, pray to God she don't feel uprooted. And John was like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, like <laughs> relax. Like, nah, you don't have to scream and yell and be hyper aggressive for everything that you say. Like, are you not truly feeling and understanding the impact of your words? Like, take a step back and really, like, understand that. And that was my first time really, like, as an artist, understanding, the, you know, that your voice can do different things as far as and how you use your voice can add to the impact. I always thought, yo, you got to rap hard. You got to bar out. That's what's going to bring impact to your words. It's like, no. Um, so John definitely taught me that lesson. And throughout the years, figuring out how to implement it has been something that I've I figured out. So these days, I feel like what's changed from my music back then to today is just that nuance in how I present myself um, on a record, like using my voice taking a step back being more reserved with my lyrics um if i want to say something that's more aggressive and in your face then like i could definitely do that but also at the same time just like sometimes the words that you're you're saying you need to have be, be more soft presenting and and that adds to the impact of it as well so that's the biggest thing that i've added to my artistry Right. And then, of course, you know, like the big the big obvious thing is the name change. Um, what what inspired what inspired you to drop Danny Watts and go with Gerard? I mean, like Gerard's obviously your middle name, but like where but like why? Why Gerard? Why the name change? Um. So. So shout out to my mama, like in, in so many ways, my mama saved me. Um. um but my my first and last name is my dad's name and and um my middle name is the name that my mom gave me she wanted to give me my dad's full name which is daniel ray watts uh or no he wanted me to have his full name and have me as a junior but she was like no um uh, mm -hmm. my my son is gonna have part of his name that's his own and so that's how i got gerard and uh you know, as you, as you grow through life, like I, I have a, a, a real strong relationship with God, um, had different experiences where going to church growing up. But these days I feel like my relationship with God is personal. It's not it's not being forced upon me by other people. Um, and one thing I, I realized about life is, uh, you know, they say God is the Alpha and Omega, like the beginning and the end. And so. Mm -hmm that that's already chosen for you. Your beginning and your end is already chosen for you, but we get this this time on earth to really claim as our own. Um, and, and that's my middle name. Like my middle name and my last name was already chosen for me, but my mama gave me this middle name. And once, I, once that clicked for me, I was praying so much because I was having conflictions with my name um, just because, you know, I always had a, a tough relationship with my name because I always felt like I was trying to be better than it or separate yeah. myself from it. Um, mm. And yeah, like, like I said, my mom, my mom is the reason that I present myself as I am today. Like I told you, like, look who's talking. That's, that reminds me of me and my mom, like all the values that I have. Like when I, when I, uh, when I when I hop in an Uber car ride or a Lyft ride, they always be like, "Man, you are so mannerable." Like, tell your mom I said she did a real good job. I'm like, I'm gonna let her know you said that because I need that credit. Uh, so my mom is the reason why I present yeah. myself the way that I am today. And what better way to to uh to pay homage to her than the thing that's most important to me, which is my music and my art form. Um, uh, so that was the reason why I decided to go with the name Gerard. Oh man, that's wow. That really, that really hit me in the heart, bro. <laughs> I wasn't, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that to be so, I wasn't expecting that to be so deep. Um, yeah, I love that. I'm happy. Cause like, that's, 
I don't always think about that when it comes to like people who are either juniors or like close enough to being juniors that you might as well be a junior. Like, you know, like you literally have someone else's name. Like there's like a whole other person that, you know, like whether it's like explicit or implied, like you gotta, like you're living in that person's shadow. And this is a way for you to kind of cut that off and be like, this is who I am. You know, and like, cause, and it's crazy. It's crazy to think that because you already did that so much. Like the thing that really gets me, like having gone back and like run black boy meets world again for the first time in a while, like it really like smacked me in the face that like, that was like, you know, you had made music before that, but that was like your first project. And it was so, it was so personal and it was so soulful and so thoughtful. And so you were already doing so much work digging into yourself. And that was under a name that belonged to somebody else. <laughs> like that shit is crazy. You know, like you're already, you know, like you're already digging so deep, but there's a whole other six feet under that. And that's what Gerard is. That's what Gerard is become for you you know like it, it, it you know like looking looking through the youtube channel you know like you started you started uploading shit about a year ago if not before that and you know like you dig into all you know you continue to dig into all of this stuff and like there's just like more depths to be found you know like i remember the first time i watched like watch so free happen and it's just like you rapping in the back of a truck and just like exp and just like kind of catching people up in the way that you catch people up like when did uh so yeah, yeah so like you do everything with your friends in the neo soul group and you start you start realizing you can take this in more directions what inspired you to make a youtube channel upload a video and start like like what pulled you back i mean like not that you ever like fully left but like what pulled you back to like releasing music for people to hear um it was just when i first got to la bro la you know that's the music capital of the world you know right. arguably. um yeah. and you know that that will make or break you so when i first got to la and i was playing people my demos and stuff that i made in houston bro you can feel you can literally feel the difference bro like when they pass the ox and it's like, yo, I'm gonna play you some demos that I've been working on. Um, and you hear all these different artists playing demos, and you like, what the fuck? And then it yeah. gets time for you to play, and you like, nah, I don't even want to do it. <laughs> and then you hit play, and you could just kind of tell, like, they kind of be like, hey, yeah, bro, you talented, bro. Like, you just know that they just saying that shit just to say it. Yeah. So. <laughs> So like That's that real. was definitely like a make or break part point for me. And like that just made me hungry. Like, nah, bro, y'all got me messed up. Like, I'm finna go back to the drawing board and really like figure this shit out. And so once I really like started putting everything together and 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 really feeling addicted to my own music and pressing and pressing play for people to listen to and then i started getting people like hey hey yo bro can you send me that like i know it's not out yet but bro i i need i need to listen to that song like <laughs> bro just send me a link text it to me or whatever bro i gotta hear it again or if i didn't want to send it it would be on some like i hey, just know that every time i see you bro i'm gonna have you plug up to the ox so you could play me that song so that's like yeah you feel me so that 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 started letting me know that like um i was doing the right thing because it was coming from uh musical opinions that i really respected um right. i started right. developing the ecosystem as far as like i had a um a, a producer homie that just allowed me to pull up to his studio and like throw paint at the wall uh one of my homies ghost mcgrady um uh my producer homie is produced by dav and then my uh I had another producer homie named Ghost McGrady, but he switched over to videos. So he got crazy with video editing and shooting and stuff like that. So he came to me and was like, bro, like we got to make some visuals for this type of, for this music that you're working on. And it was just, 
like I always tell people, like I, I I'm not in the I'm not in the music business. I'm in the music friendsness. So the fact that I was able to have like a strong ecosystem of people that genuinely support me like that, it was like a no brainer for me at that point. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't I I I I I didn't I didn't want people to hear that, but I appreciate it. But like the the music, <laughs> the music friendsness, I I I I've never I've never heard that. And it's one of those things. It's like it should be so obvious. But yeah, no, nah, like you want to you want to surround yourself with people that you can trust and not just people who are going to like big you up, because like obviously it's important for people to tell you that like they like your shit. But, you know, to have people like that and to have people like John earlier, like pull you aside and be like, look, you don't need to do all that. Maybe fix this up. Do that. Like, you know, like just having people be honest with you and like treat you like a person and not just like somebody that like everything's going to be like, yeah, this shit fire. And then that's it. You know, like that's like, <laughs> yes, bro. I would, I, I would, I would, I would almost prefer that you have something a little more to say than just like, yeah, this shit tough. You know, I need the like, assholes, bro. I always yeah. tell people be an asshole. It's not gonna hurt my feelings. I'm see, see, like I'm guilty. I'm guilty of not digging in as far as I need to sometimes. And I'm trying to get like I'm a critic, so like that's like my whole job. But it's like it's it can be difficult when it's like your people. But obvi but but like I'm not in that position often. Obviously, like I'm not saying that like I'm always getting sent shit that's trash. Like, please. That, that's not what I'm saying. I don't want people to get mad at me. Um, but uh, no, nah, like it's just it's just nice to know that you can. It's nice to know that you're surrounded by people who have your best interest at heart and are going to be honest with you about your shit, whatever it is. You know, and um, you know, like more specifically, you know, you were talking about like visuals and shit. Talk to me about talk to me about making so free and like why that why why that felt like the right time to be like hey i'm back this is who i am and like there's even more than that because at that point you're still going by danny watts but um but like talk to me about so free and like uh, why it was a time for that oh uh, yeah bro i just felt like um you know i i, I made to i made it to la and you know, i was accomplishing what i set out to accomplish like i was making better music um I was developing an infrastructure around me of, of people who supported the music that I was working on. Um, and it just felt like I was doing the thing that I was supposed to do. I was breaking away from um, just being comfortable. You know, I moved to LA and, and could have, you know, I was an optician before, before I moved out there. I worked at a doc doctor's office selling glasses and stuff. And yeah, I moved to LA and I, I got a job at a doctor's office for like a week and then I quit. Like, bro, this is not what I moved to LA for. Like, what? Right. I could have stayed home for this. Um, and so it was just really going against the grain, living a completely different lifestyle, um, thinking outside of the box, not really, uh, you know, I was, bro by the grace of God and by the love of friends, I was protected so much while I was out there. And I truly just felt like free, bro. Like I felt like I was doing a thing. I had people around me that supported me doing my thing. And they were, you know, trying to, they were doing what they could to get me to get, get to the next level because we all believed in what I was doing. And yeah. that was just the first time in my life where it's like, bro, I'm free from all that bullshit that the world try to like force you into like, and I'm just doing my thing. And that's all that matters to me. Right. And that's all that, you know, like that's all that matters at the end of the day is like, if, if like, you know, like, if like, are you fulfilled? You know, like, exactly. I, I mean, like, I, I'm like, obviously like, are you safe? Do you have shelter? You got food? Uh, is your family straight? And then are you fulfilled? You know, like that's the those those are the most important things. And, you know, like you do all of this, you ensure that you're cool. You drop this song. You um, you drop this song and then you gradually start dropping more songs and you start to do more visuals. And then we get to a thing like Real Names where you officially kind of cut the rope and are like, I'm Gerard now like talk to talk talk to me about real names 
specifically. Also, I'm gonna link to all these videos wherever you're listening to this, so y'all can go see and check my man's out. But um, talk to me about real names and putting that together, and making that song, and you know, like, cause like you, you know, like you would, you know, like not only had you established yourself, but you established yourself in a pretty showy way, at least in terms of like indie rap. Like you would kind of like you would like you would partner it up with somebody who was cooking with like some crazy grease at that time. And, you know, like you took maybe about five or six years and you're coming back with a whole new name. Like, I know there's like, I, I'm you know, like, I'm sure it was a lot of pressure and just like a lot of consideration of like, how are people going to take this? Like, so talk to me about not only making the song and making the video, but like, were you scared of how people were going to react to like a new name? and a new perspective and a new style, or not, not even so much a new style, but like new name and new perspective. Uh, no, bro. Good, was, good, yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> I was not thinking about none of that, bro. Like I said, the, this, the, the inspiration for this name change literally came through, through prayers from God. Um, it came through him talking to me and me, just waking up one day and being like, I'm changing my name. And um, it was, I knew that I was doing it for all the right reasons. You know, anything that I feel like I, I'm doing to like, uh, to highlight how much my mom means to me, you, you can't tell me nothing, bro. Like when it comes right. to my dukes, like I don't care what nobody got to say. It's not for you. You know, I, I definitely want my music to be impactful on people, but bro, this is for me at the end of the day, how I present this, what I say, this is all for me and what I want to highlight. Uh, so it, it wasn't, it wasn't something that took a lot of thought. Um, it wasn't something that I was nervous about. And the, the video and the, the song really just came about the, uh, the, the Freddie Gibbs and Mad Libs joint. Um, that's you know that's what that instrumental is from, and yeah. I'm a huge Mad Lib fan as far as producers is concerned, so it's like a no brainer. Um, so I just kind of borrowed their canvas and used it to to paint my own colors on top of it, and yeah. uh, the video was just literally me just longboarding home from the studio one night. I was like, bro, I got a GoPro camera. Uh, I would just longboard home and just hold that mug in front of me and just edit that mug and cap cut and just upload it bro like screw all of the the i need visuals for this bro this is my real life this is what i do on the daily this is what you're gonna see i respect that so much and yeah like when i first when i first heard the shit i thought to myself like yeah no nah, this sounds like the back half of fake names like and and and, and that was and, and yeah like that's one of my that's like also huge mad lib fan been a huge mad lib fan for like however damn near 20 years at this point um and like yeah no nah, like hearing that and seeing what you did with it and like you know like it's obviously not just you rapping over the beat like it's sped up and sounds different and like you just you you, you know like you made it your own for, for and, the right purposes oh yeah come on like <laughs> type shit but um i don't know it was just really cool it's just been really cool to see you kind of, you know, like re coming into your own. Cause you know, you had this, you had this coordination before um, under different circumstances. And now you're kind of giving yourself a different coordination, like, uh, like, like fully on your own terms. And then that leads, and then that leads to here's what I've been doing, which is, uh, you know, like your like official reintroduction, like, you know, like first big dip back into like, releasing a full project on streaming services like you had singles and stuff before that that are of course really dope but like this is like the i'm back like i'm here this is me now um talk to me about putting this whole project together and uh you know like what you feel was different about the creative process with this versus the stuff you did when you first or or like the stuff you did post black boy meets world and black boy meets world like how are all three of those things different from each other i for sure man i feel like well with black boy meets world it was definitely uh heavy heavy on john wayne's influence you know right. he i just came in 
I, I chose the beats that I wanted to rap over. I rapped over the beats. I went home. Um, he did all of the mixing and mastering. He added in all the additional production, brought in instrumentalists and stuff. I wasn't there for any of that stuff. Like, I'll never forget. He would send me mixes, and I'd be like, bro, it doesn't hurt in my headphones. Okay, it's good. Like, like I don't know what you yeah. want me to say here, bro. Like, and he'd be like, all right, I'm going to send you a different version. Like, bro, I don't know the difference in this version from the, the first version you sent me. Uh, so I definitely was just kind of, I just did, I just went in there to rap. And then going into um, the music that I was making after that, um, I definitely felt like as a rapper, I was, I was really good at rhyming words, but, and, and telling my story, but there, there also was a level of like, you know, I just need a word to rhyme. Like I just need, I just need to rhyme this with this. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that I intentionally want to say. I just got to make it rhyme, bro. So I can get, get these last few bars and get this song done. Um, yeah. Whereas like, honestly on this project, there is not one wasted word. Um, there's not one wasted lyric. Um, I come from a very, um, quasi lyrical miracle spiritual type of rap where I, I read the thesaurus and i read the dictionary and so i would literally like use these big words like i i was dubbed like sat rap like people would literally message me and be like bro listen to danny watts while i study the sats um so <laughs> i definitely um uh, well here's what i've been doing like i broke it down to like these are words that I use in my everyday lexicon. This is how I speak. Um, um, I definitely feel like as a as a, um, a a fan of battle rap, you get a little bit of that as far as like bars, metaphors, double entendres, extended metaphors. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yep. Um, but it's all meaningful. Like I feel like there are a lot of entendres and metaphors on here that you don't hear other rappers use. You don't hear them in other rappers' songs because you know we can, you know, bars get reused a lot um, from song to song, and so I feel like that's one thing that I did in this is like really set myself apart um, as far as like the themes that I present, um, the music. I, I was very hands-on with the beats, but then also I mixed a lot of these records. Um, I really sat with these records and and thought about. Should I add more? Should I not add more? Like, is a minute enough? Like, and I, I, I took the Vince Staples approach. Like, I'll never forget back in the day. He was like, bro, if all I got is like a minute of worth for stuff to say, then, bro, all you get is a minute. Like, I'm not finna just force it because the rubric says you got to have two verses or three verses and two hooks and stuff. Like, that's not me, bro. Um, right. And I really feel like the, my, my writing style is more defined. It's more... um. It's more journal centered kind of I feel like the whole album just kind of listens as a diary. It's just like just turning the page um, every song. So uh, I feel like my DNA is all over this project there. I was I was the the engineer. I was the executive producer. I made the final decision. There was nobody else. Um, I I found the producers that I, I needed to work with. I found any or extra instrumentation that i needed like this is all me from beginning to end with the help of my homies of sure but but you know what i'm saying like when it came down to that final decision this has gerard's imprint all over it right and you know like i forget i forget which song it was but like you mentioned there's like there's like a lyric like not necessarily on this project but like on one of like your YouTube songs, there was um it ends with you saying that like everything we do is art and that's the name, and that's the name of the imprint that you put this out on. So like this is really you know you know like this is really like your baby in every way shape and form, and it's really dope because, like, I'll listen to songs like Lonely Days Ahead or Write Me Off. Where like like and, and and I'm already blanking on which song, but like you mentioned something about like diary pages on this project. Write me uh, off. In, 
it, it, yeah yeah okay so it was write me off i just i just second I, I just second guess myself like shit but like write me off and you know you know, you know like, even like feud for thought and like this is all you know like this is all ground you've covered before but you but like there's just like a lot more clarity here and like confidence not that you weren't not that you didn't sound clear and confident before but this is like this is the next phase you know like it's uh it's really gratifying and refreshing to just see you fully embrace who you are um just like when it comes to production when it comes to like flows and melody and all this other shit like like I like like I actually do wanna I actually do wanna focus on two of these joints and I think they would have to be write me off and feud for thought. Like talk to me about making those in particular and uh what them two songs mean to you. Oh uh, write me off is uh <laughs> it it's it's kind of surface level um in the sense of like it's kind of the inspiration came from it like tax write-offs um right and and you know i, I said this the other day in, in my listening party i definitely feel like if i come into some money one day like i'm gonna definitely get wesley snipes by the irs because i'm just one of those niggas like i don't believe in taxes i don't believe in insurance like all this shit the way a lot of the way america is set up is just a scam for us to keep feeding the system so as much as I can avoid uh paying taxes and stuff like that, bro, I don't care, bro. Like fuck all that shit. Um, but going deeper into it, it's it's just about me writing myself off. Um, the industry sort of sort of writing writing off. Like um, I feel like there's been a resurgence, but there was definitely a point in time, and I still feel like it's prevalent. But you know, artists like me that have things that they care about purpose integrity and values that they you know want to instill in people and share um um it's not it's not a big enough space for us like it used to be in 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 the history of uh hip-hop um so yeah that was really just talking about um me writing myself off the industry writing writing me off and just the play on words as far as like i really take i really take journal writing to heart like that's how i start all my songs is like with a journal entry first and i feel like that's what it healed me um is writing off this pain and putting it on a page but then able to be and go back and like read and reflect on it things that i never really did before i always just wrote from a, a music perspective um right so yeah that that song is real important to me and you said food for thought as well right yeah uh fuel for thought um that was a record produced by my homie. Write Me Off was produced by my homie in L.A. His name is M. Um, Food for Thought was produced by my homie in Houston. His name is Tony Dark. Been been rocking with him since, like, the early, like, 2010s, like, 2009. But that song was a, a, another one where, you know, I do have moments where I want to uh, I wanna give up. You know, I, I struggle with just being like, bro, it, it ain't it's not really working for me it's not written in the cards for me i'm having a hard time figuring this out um uh, and i think the the content to that is like i just kind of took like a it really just started with the first line like uh um uh, uh, i'm drawing a blank right now i got so many no, lyrics going good. through my head but um uh, but I know in one of the lines I say, like, waiter, I table my problems quick. Uh, uh, trying to get order for all of this. And it's really just like the the amount of time I took to make the music, the amount of time it really took to like for me to figure all of this stuff out. Um, it really was a fight to get to this point to put this project out. Um, and I kind of was upset. It was like, bro, why did it take you so long to like get to this point? Like, like, bro, you could have gotten here way faster if you'd have, like, been more intentional, took more advantage of the time that you were given and actually, you know, fight and not give up sometimes and be like, bro, I'm done with this music shit. Uh, but it's also that and then just the responsibility that I feel like I have. And that's why it goes into, like, don't fit in as well. Um, uh, but it's just the responsibility I have to, like, 
be be this staple that I am and, and fight for this writing style, fight for this uh, type of integrity in music, this type of vulnerability in music and really take that on and be like like and, and don't fit in. I say, uh, I guess I'm the janitor. I do the job that no one honors. Like I'm here to clean up shit like, bro, this is what I'm here for. I'm, I'm cleaning up shit in my headspace and my spirit. And, you know, my my job as an artist is to be the balance to to everything so yeah. yeah be the change you want to see in the world you know that shit is important you know like that's how that that's how ideas get sparked and that's how we build and create and all that stuff and it's like you know you uh you took your time to get here but you're here you know like you're here you made music that you're clearly really proud of and you should be proud of it because it's tight um and you know like i hope you're not beating yourself up too much about it because you you know like you're here and people give a shit and i'm excited to see not only am i excited to see it grow like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do the where you're gonna go next shit because that's always so corny to me but like i'm just you know like i'm happy you're here i'm happy that you dropped this shit and that people can sit with it and you know like especially because like i know there's like 80 80,000 people being like, oh, whatever happened to Danny Watts? You know, like people who like heard you, like who heard Black Boy Meets World. And then, you know, like seven years later are like, oh, I wonder what happened to Danny, you know? And like, you're here now and you're doing this and it sounds great. Like there's a, like, you know, like there's so much variety here and you're taking, you're just taking stock of your life. Like you always have just with a little bit more experience. Like before we formally wrap this up, um, you know, like the project's been out for a little less than a week at this point. Like you said, you had a listening party. Um, you like there's just been like a whole bunch of different things to help roll this out a little bit um, since it's been out for probably about. It dropped on Saturday, right? Yeah. yeah so it's been Saturday. so it's been like four days. So like over the last four days, how how's the response been? Well, how's the response been and how do you feel? four days after release uh it, it's been real good like you know i definitely have people reaching out to me and like you know i'm a writer bro so the fact that people hit me up and be like bro this lyric was crazy or like bro how you did this was amazing like uh you you reached out to me and one of the things that really was cool is like bro i feel like you you found like the sweet spot between like plain talk but also flowery and like and so I was like, yes, bro, like you get it, because that's literally what I was trying to do. Uh, uh, so it's always good for pe when people reach out to me in that regard. Um, you know, the, the music landscape has like changed a lot. So I'm still figuring out my way in that as far as like this new content era. Uh, but learning learning to like quell my expectations and just be happy with the fact that that thing that is out um uh, it's been a process for me because i have like i have like really high expectations you know i'll be honest like I, yeah. I i put myself like you know like kendrick said like fuck the big three it's just big me like i feel like i'm up there with mm -hmm. them you feel me even though they're not my peers like you can't tell me that i don't rap better than anybody that's that's stepping in front of a microphone these days um and so it, it's definitely been good um I'm just leaning into this the, the content era and like learning how to show other aspects of me outside of just like, yeah, I make really good music, um, leaning into that side of things so I can really show people um, where the 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 integrity of the music like comes from, like who I am as a person and why I say the things that I say in my music. So right. that's been a real big focal point for me lately. Yeah, no, I'm happy to hear it, you know, because I mean, like, especially, especially like over the course of the last seven years, things have changed so much like the, you know, just like the way people listen to music, the way people get music, the value that a lot of people do or don't put on music, you know, like we, we, we see the value, but a lot of other people don't. And, you know, like that can be kind of depressing sometimes. But then, you know, like, we find our tribes, we find our niches and we make the shit work the way we need to. And it's just, it, it's just like, it, it's just crazy to think 
that so much of like i mean like right now it's like right now it's like youtube tiktok and socials and all of that shit like even all of that shit's on a timer you know like who knows what it's going to look like in five years who knows what this is going to look like in two years you know like the shit's always changing and uh the best thing you can do is you know it's it's just like it's always been it's adapt or die at this point and you know this is you adapting this is you making space for yourself and saying like hey i'm here i got a thing i think it's special fuck you if you think otherwise if you like it cool if not cool and i respect that a lot because it takes a lot to put yourself out there especially after being gone for being gone quote unquote for so long you know like this is once again like this is a reintroduction and i hope and think that people are gonna really take the time to sit with it and be like oh yeah this is tight you know so like just like congrats i don't know like i'm just i'm just you know like you know, like as you know, like as someone who's seen a good portion of this journey come together i'm just proud to see you here and i'm happy that uh you wanted to take the time to come and talk to me about it but um before we before we get into all the schmaltzy bullshit um last question for you gerard danny if your life was a movie what would it be about If my life was a movie, it would definitely be. Uh, it would just be uh, centered around. Um, <laughs> it would be like it would be like Drumline, bro. Like, hey, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, it would be like Drumline. Uh, you know, I feel like that that movie is is definitely in my DNA. Um, you know, a mixture of like music, but then also a come of, coming of age story. Like, you know, he definitely had issues with his pops in that movie. Uh, yeah. He, you know, he had a close relationship with his mom in that movie and yeah. and music was just in his DNA. He had to he he was somebody that was like really skilled uh, at music. But then he also had to like lock in and really like establish like who he was other than just being like a skilled drummer, you know, he had to um, really go back and like listen to music, unpack the music and understand how he can um, build the relationship closer with music, but then with those, with others around him as well. And I feel like that that's a part of who I am as well. Like I, I have a hard time truly relying and seeking the help of other people to help make what I'm doing grow. Um, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. it was, it would, you know, it would be, it would be drumline in a sense, for real, for real. Well, um, as long, like, as long as you're not out here playing no flight of the bumblebees, I think that's cool. You I know? got a, I got a, I got a beat. I actually have a song where it kind of feels like flight of the bumblebee, bro. Oh, it's, so, it's so hard, bro. I'm gonna send it to you, bro. So you <laughs> yeah, please, time. please. I want to hear. It. I'm, I'm just playing because I always think of the scene when, um, uh, when they're at one of the games and. Uh, Orlando Jones doesn't want he, he he's he, he's like oh the musicianship of hip hop da 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 and then like they're like like the um the A and T band is playing uh, I think they play um the Apache song yeah. from Fresh Prince and then he's like hit him with the flight of the bumblebees and there's like one dude in the or there's one dude in the band who just goes Ugh. like it's just like just like a big old so like that's this fucking flight of the bumblebees yeah. bullshit and then nick cannon comes in and they do like the they I, I forget what song it is they do but they do a song and um now that you got me thinking about it if <laughs> if you were to be a part of if you were to either lead or be a part of a band that played the bet classic who would your pd pablo be oh <laughs> oh man uh like whose song are you okay okay yeah Juel santana bro yeah 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 yeah, yeah what song bro. would it be what song what song what song are you remaking with the band oh bro uh oh i think it's called what the game's been missing okay yeah i know that one yeah 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 i mean bro jewels is a cheat code you could definitely go like whistle you know uh you could do you could do bro it's something to think of but bro what the game's been missing like yeah. that record is such a classic record to me bro that song yeah. is like that's like a definition of hip-hop to me 
<laughs> yeah, nah, like I remember when the cover for the album first came out and it's like him playing chess. Yeah, because like that's the album with the whistle song on it. Yeah, that yeah, that album is important to me too. I fuck with that album. I fuck with that album tough. Um, those are such great answers. <laughs> Damn. Um, Gerard, bro, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for continuing to give. Thank you for continuing to share yourself with people because that's a tough thing to do. You know, especially considering the type of music you make. Like, thanks for sharing yourself. And I don't know. Thanks for just thanks for just being solid. Like we've been, we've been, we've been tight for a while. And it's just nice to nice to come back and catch up and really see you come into your own. So just like thanks for trusting me. It means a lot. Nah, for sure, man. Hey, bro, likewise, you know, I I don't get too many opportunities to like do interviews like these um, to where I can go in depth and really show people who I am outside of the music. And definitely in a in an era where uh, there aren't a lot of spaces in real life, at least from my perspective, where artists can like get that that actual attachment to fans. Um, yeah. people are coming across music online. So I think the, like, you know, from our era, like we, we hold close to like a Joel Santana because he was in the parties we would go to, we would play him at schools, we would play him in car rides and stuff like that. And because a lot of people come across new music on their phone, because, you know, they either go to work, go to school and come right home, yeah. that, that special attachment isn't really there anymore and the only opportunities that artists uh one of the biggest opportunities that artists get to to build that attachment is through interviews like this where people like you create space like us to where damn like bro this dude is really dope this interview is dope now it adds more meaning and value to the music when i go listen to it so i appreciate you for like just always being in my corner for uh forgiving me when i be an artist and be sensitive about my shit um and yeah, bro, like you said, bro, just being a solid day one since A1, bro. I mean, A1 since day one, bro. So thank you, bro. Yeah, nah, man. It's my pleasure. Like, you know, like I I, I really, I really want to like nurture and, you know, like I play, I play a small part in this. I'm just happy people trust me and like want to come and do stuff like this. You know, like this, it's, 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 it's been a journey building this and it's not really done yet. I'm, I'm just, it's, it's a lot. Like you get it. So it's just, it's just, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that you're happy and that you got something that you're really proud of and that I can help signal boost that however I can, because that's what we're here for. So just like, yeah, nah, man, thank you. It just like means the world to be trusted, honestly. Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far. And shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.